Okay, hello and welcome back. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and continue on, just adding a little bit more circuitry to our uh, and some code to our uh, uh, Pro Mini here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, make my Pro Mini have a little sound to it. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use a piezo piezo speaker. They're coming a bunch of different ways. Um, here's one that you can kind of see. It's relatively large with wires attached. Another one. You can buy these at any one of a number of stores. Radio Shack has them. Uh, supplies electronics. We sell them as too. Uh, Roboticy does. Another cute little one. And the one I'm actually going to use right now is this very small one. And if you look carefully, I'm going to push this board aside for this higher res. When you look carefully at it, I do want you to be aware of the fact that there is a positive and a negative to it. Okay? And in this case, boy, it's hard to see with this camera, but that's a little positive sign right there. Let's see if I can zoom that in even a little bit more. Oh, I got a lighting problem. You'll have to trust me. It's a positive sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in to my board. And it's really, really simple. Um, so let's take a look. We've already tied up basically all of port D. We have these two pins here tied up with port B. We have these two of port B set for input for our switches, which we're going to leave in there. And moving right along, we come to 10, 11, we come to uh, pin 12, which is still available. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in so that the positive wire goes in pin 12 someplace and the negative wire just goes into the ground bus. How simple is that? Okay. Now let's talk about getting it to work. Um, let's look at the code that I've already kind of typed here. Uh, nothing new up front. And if I zoom down here, uh, nothing new here, actually, because we're going to be using a, uh, a uh, symbol from the library. So it's going to handle all this port direction stuff for us. Um, the only thing I want you to pay attention to here, this is all pretty much the same as it was in the last program, but I've added this extra line down here. Um, so you see tone. This tone needs a couple of parameters to it. And I should, I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take and momentarily um, get rid of this one. And we're going to put a new one in there so you can see exactly why I did what I did. Okay, let's copy this. We'll make a copy of it. Oops, I was supposed to go on the next line. All right, let's make it really simple. Let's just go faster times 10. So the first portion of this tells it which pin. Okay, it's hooked to pin 10. In this particular case, it's going to tell us the frequency. Now I have faster times 10. Well, that's because faster is actually cutting, in this particular case, is going from 100 down to 2. Okay, well that's uh, pretty low frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it. each one of these values that gets generated in this loop as faster goes from 100 to 99 to 98. Recall that from the last one. Um, I'm going to multiply each of those numbers by 10, which means that this thing is going to start off with sending out a tone from pin 12 at 100 times 10 or 1,000. And if it reaches the value of 2, it's going to jump over to, it's going to reset faster to 100. It's going to jump to our little subroutine called splash. And in splash, I have changed it a little bit because I didn't want it to just play a monotonous tone over and over again. I've actually put in some manual values. Tone, we've got 12 going to 500, 400, 300, 200, 100. And it goes back up again, 300, 150, give a little funny sound to it. And if I upload this, we will do that now, we should get an obnoxious little sound coming from the piezo. And let's see what happens. I 
hope you can hear that. Okay, do you hear that? And what I had originally done was I wanted it to, I wanted to make this thing kind of get, you know, a little bit scary as it goes faster and faster and faster. And I thought the sound should actually get higher and higher and higher, not lower, lower, lower as it goes faster. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I kind of wanted to invert it. So let's do it. Uh, to invert it, all I did is start it off high, and I'm going to subtract that value. Okay. So if we do it, we should hear it sort of go the other direction. And let's load it up. And there you go. The pitch is getting higher and higher and higher. The LEDs are getting faster and faster and faster. Higher and faster. And there you have it. So it went a complete cycle. So that's all I'm going to show you on this piece of code, and I will post it. And the next one, we're going to work on uh, motor control. So I will see you shortly.